Hello, you're listening to On Israeli Dal Monitor, and I'm Ben Kaspi from Tel Aviv. The podcast of, uh, you're hearing uh, was recorded on the weekend Nimkin, the two most symbolic weeks of Israeli statehood. The week during which Israel remembers the Holocaust of the Jewish people, and the week it marks the revival. Exactly a week after marking Holocaust Remembrance Day, last Wednesday, This Wednesday, Israelis will mourn those who die defending the state and then celebrate its hard-won independence achieved 74 years ago against all odds. Our guest today embodies this unique link between our people's greatest tragedy and the amazing miracle to which it gave birth. His parents survived the Holocaust and uh, rebuilt their lives in the Jewish homeland. Benny Gantz himself served in the military for 38 years, first as a part trooper and eventually as commander of the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces. In recent years, he held the position of alternate prime minister alongside then Prime Minister Netanyahu and is currently Israel's Minister of Defense. We'll talk with him about the numerous complex challenges facing Israel, Iran's nuclear program, of course, the future of the Gaza Strip, the flashpoints at Jerusalem's holy sites, the war in Ukraine and its potential impact on Israel's campaign against Iran under Russian aerial umbrella in Syria. Lieutenant General Benny Gantz joins us right after this short break. I'm Elizabeth Hagedorn, and I'm the State Department correspondent at El Monitor. And I'm Joe Snell. I'm El Monitor's video editor. Let's admit it. This past year has been difficult to stay on top of the news and sift through what's accurate and what's misleading. Let El Monitor help you. If you care about the Middle East and North Africa, you should consider listening to El Monitor's audio series on the Middle East with Andrew Parasoliti and Amber and Zaman, and on Israel with Ben Kaspi. You can now watch our newest video podcast, Reading the Middle East with Gilles Capel. You can subscribe to these series on your favorite podcast platforms. And through a host of free daily and weekly newsletters, we offer a range of perspectives with the highest journalistic standards. You can subscribe to these newsletters at almonitor.com. As an award-winning media service headquartered in Washington, D.C., Almonitor has a network of over 160 contributors around the world. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to visit almonitor.com, where you can find all of these newsletters and podcasts, along with first-class reporting and analysis. I'm privileged to introduce my, our guest today. Uh, he was uh, the chief of staff of the Israeli IDF. Now he's uh, the defense minister of uh, the state of Israel, Lieutenant General Benny Gantz. Hi, Benny. Shalom. Thank you for joining us here in, uh, on Israel in Al Monitor. Shalom, Ben, and shalom to our audience. Okay, I want to, I want to start not talking about the security and all the problems but something more more uh, intimate maybe it's a uh, it's it's very intimate but it is also a uh, very Israeli and uh, uh, your mother Malka Weiss survived the Bergen Belsen concentration camp her relatives were uh, murdered by the Nazis as young refugees your parents Nacho and Malka tried to reach Palestine, but their ship was uh, turned back by the British authorities and sent to Cyprus. Uh, you yourself uh, were born in Israel. I would imagine that for you, this is a particularly emotional time. First, as, as you remember your relatives who uh, perished, then as you command, uh, commemorate your fellow soldiers killed in Israel's wars, some of whom you personally sent into battle, and then as a leader, in the independent Jewish state. Could you share with us some of your thoughts, uh, your feelings in these very sensitive days between the, the, the Holocaust Day and the Independence Day? Uh, yes, Ben, uh, this is uh, definitely an emotional uh, period for me. And I guess for many Israelis and Jews around the world, uh, all those uh, three uh, days of uh, Yom HaShoah, uh, Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzmaut uh, 
Memorial Day is for both the Holocaust and uh, our Memorial Day, and of course, uh, the Day of Independence. Uh, I will share with you that just recently, a uh, piece was published about the persecution and the murder of Romanian Jews, uh, written from my father's perspective. I learned that my father actually fought in one of the independence battle over Beirut Yitzchak, which was one of the most difficult fights in 1948 and lost many of his close friends. Uh, in one of his diaries, I also found the description of the time uh, that he spoke with me about the importance of drafting to the military combat positions. So indeed, uh, uh, this is very emotional for me. And in this uh, period of security and social tensions, I think about my parents and the hundreds of thousands of Jews like them who lost uh, uh, so much and survived the Holocaust. And after all the suffering, they gathered the strength uh, to come here and uh, build our country. There, as their descendants, uh, we have the privilege, and I would say even the duty and honor uh, to continue their legacy and secure the state of Israel. And as you can imagine, I wish they could be here to see me together with uh, the many friends I lost along the years. But uh, you know, that it is what it is, and 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 we must move on and continue the missions and make sure that uh, we are justifying the terrible cost that as, a Jew, as the Jewish people we paid in the Holocaust and as the military organizations we have paid along the years to make sure Israel exists. Without uh, threats. And so let's, uh, let's jump into uh, exactly this. And uh, one of the major problems uh, 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 I'm taking now uh, you back to the present. Uh, the, one of the greatest problems that Israel faces, the government has achieved a significant milestone in convincing the U.S. administration not to remove the Iranian Revolutionary Guard from the list of uh, terrorist organizations. This could prevent the signing of the new agreement on Iran's nuclear agreement. In your view, which alternative better serves Israel's interests? A highly flawed agreement with Iran or no agreement at all? Uh, we're definitely facing a very complex strategic uh, situation. And I hope that the war in Ukraine uh, will not push the Iranian issue aside. And, and I would say uh, about the nuclear agreement that first and foremost, I would say that Israel is doing everything together with its partners to influence a possible agreement in order to improve it if there will be one. And, and regardless uh, of whether or not the agreement will be signed, uh, we will continue to highlight Iran's activities and encouraging our partners to take actions because I must emphasize as I've been doing for so many in so many different events that Iran is first and foremost a global challenge then it's a regional challenge and only then it is a threat to the state of Israel uh, and I think that the world should not look at it as if it is solving an Israeli problem, it is helping itself. And regarding the FTO uh, and the revolutionary guards, we need to remember that Iran is the biggest exporter of terrorism in the world and should be treated as such. Therefore, I think it is important to insist on keeping them on the list. And from an Israeli perspective, whether there be an agreement or won't be an agreement, we will always know how to defend ourselves by ourselves and to build the uh, capabilities uh, to deal with the, to face the threat. That was the case in all uh, different uh, situations before, and this is no different now. You answered many of the questions I, I, I wrote for myself about the Iranian uh, issue. 
but let me emphasize maybe the last one because much has been you, you just said the Israel will, will keep uh, the, the possibility or the ability to defend itself by itself and much has been made of what Israel calls uh, this military option and the government has uh, allocated lately major budgets for upgrading its capabilities for such a response as Israel's defense minister can you tell us how realistic a military option is uh, for blocking Iran's nuclear program? How long uh, would it take Israel <clears throat> to, uh, uh, to achieve the military capabilities necessary to set back the Iranian program by at least two to three years? Yeah. Well, indeed, Iran has advanced uh, significantly in the last year, and it is uh, quite close, I would say, weeks away uh, from what we call professionally uh, SQ-1. Uh, that does not mean that Iran is close to having a, nu to have a, a nuclear weapon, because it still needs to develop uh, quite uh, many and certain capabilities. Uh, I, with your permission, Ben, I would like to uh, we express that the United States have constantly expressed its commitment never to allow Iran to become a nuclear country. And as I said before, uh, we need to remember that Iran is a global and regional challenge, and not only a threat to the state of Israel. Therefore, it's very important uh, to make sure we never become uh, uh, a, a nuclear uh, state. Uh, we are uh, developing, we do have our capabilities and we are strengthening them uh, in order to defend ourselves. Um, as you probably assumed before, I cannot really elaborate uh, on our present and future capabilities, but I can say that we have those capabilities in our hands and we will keep strengthening strengthen them uh, and we will be able, uh, regardless of timing, uh, uh, to be effective operationally speaking. But uh, with your permission, Ben. Uh, Not go into details. I won't go into details <laughs> on this issue. Okay, so my last question about the, the, this issue is uh, that it's not secret that you're not exactly on the same page as Prime Minister Bennett and Foreign Minister Lapid regarding Israel's policies vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Washington on the Iran issue. The official explanation that we've been getting is that uh, you don't criticize American policy on Iran because you're looking at the long term and at your responsibility for maintaining Israel's vital defense and strategic relations with Washington. Is this a calculated decision that Bennett and Lapid will uh, play the bad cap while you remain the good cap mm. vis a vis the US? Or are there really ideological differences between you? Uh, ben, you know me, I'm uh, to be the good cap is kind of my character. But, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, seriously speaking, uh, I think uh, we are basically on the on the same page, uh, and we work uh, in coordination between us and with the United States administration. Uh, you know, we coordinate before any meeting we have with U.S. officials uh, that comes to that come to visit Israel, and before we go to visit uh, them. Uh, I would like to remind everyone. I believe that Prime Minister, the, the Prime Minister and Prime Minister agree, agree with me on this, that Israel uh, is no closer or other strategic partner than the United States, uh, regardless of who's in the White House. Uh, so the dialogue uh, with our partners is conducted in appropriate channels. And uh, I think we all are uh, looking at the big pictures and uh, everyone has his own uh, style, but definitely uh, we all think that uh, it is very important to be strategically uh, strong vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Iran. Uh, and, and I think that that's what's going to happen. 
Okay, I want to, to ask now a question about um, the recently experience we are all having with the four, now it's five, because uh, yesterday, uh, uh, terrorists, uh, terrorists uh, near uh, Ariel uh, in the in Samaria shot dead an Israeli, and this is the fifth terror act uh, that is done by lone terrorists, not affiliated with any or organized infrastructure. In your assessment, is this wave over uh, uh, now? Actually, we we got yesterday a proof that is it is not over. Do you see a guiding hand behind these attacks, despite the fact that they were not carried out by any organization? We are hearing talk about Hamas playing a double game, on the one hand, preventing attacks on Israel from Gaza in order to continue its economic rehabilitation, and on the other hand, inciting anti-Israel attacks in the West Bank. Is this how you see it? Yeah, <clears throat> first and foremost, I'd like to express my uh, condolences to the families of the victims. Uh, and uh, those are indeed uh, very uh, difficult uh, days. And I must say that I'm certain uh, that as we did before, we will catch uh, those terrorists of the last events and uh, we will continue to defend ourselves. Uh, our enemies, you know, may 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 be able to hurt us, but I don't think they can harm the deep security of Israel and uh, we will not let them uh, win. Uh, there are some sensitive days ahead of us, uh, approaching uh, the holidays uh, on both uh, Islamic uh, society and the Jewish society in Israel. Uh, the situation is very tense, and the incitement, as you can imagine, is uh, ongoing and still spreading. Um, as of dealing with the terrorist wave, which is not really organized, uh, but the, the inspiration is very much uh, there. I think the way to deal with it is exactly what we have been doing. And while doing our best to separate between the terrorists themselves and the most the most part of the society, we must uh, conduct intelligence, offensive uh, and defensive operations. Uh, and from an Israeli society perspective, we must remain resilient uh, as a society in the face of uh, terrorism. And we should not let it break our spirits. Uh, we're watching what's happening in Gaza uh, since the operation of Guardian Walls. Uh, my policy has been very clear uh, to be very conservative on the security approach alongside humanitarian policy that uh, allowed, uh, that enables uh, improvement of the basic economical condition. Uh, which I will be very happy to keep if indeed it will stay. Uh, Indeed, it will stay quiet. I must emphasize then that for us, freedom of worship is the basic uh, policy that we maintain. And we saw hundreds of thousands of people are coming to worship. And I think that they should appreciate what we are doing and we should not be pulled by the extremists because if we will be pulled by them, uh, we are achieving, we are enabling them to achieve their goals. So you also answered my uh, question about the Temple Mount, which is the most dangerous dynamite kegs uh, maybe in the world. Yeah. Right now, it is relatively quiet. Uh, you think it, we are we are over the 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 hype or the the edge, or or is it still dangerous? In the, like you just said, in the upcoming few days. Uh, it is very sensitive, but as I said, uh, we are taking all the measures uh, to enable freedom of worship. Uh, and uh, those who violate the holiness of the place, as far as the Temple Mount, are uh, extremists uh, fueled by false information and incitement. Uh, Unfortunately, mostly young people influenced by online incitement. 
and organized by Hamas or so other terrorist organizations. Uh, uh, we reinforced our troops, uh, increased uh, whatever we could in terms of intelligence and have high level of coordination uh, between the different security establishments. Um, all the leaders of Israel, the, the definitely the prime minister, the foreign minister and myself, uh, hold this position of freedom of uh, worship while keeping the security. Uh, and uh, we communicate this with all our friends in the region and in the world. Um, and uh, we will continue uh, to do so. I think uh, uh, if, if somebody, I mean, if somebody wants to understand reality, he's capable of doing it. If, and, and if we just follow the incitement without checking the base, then it's a, it's a big issue, but uh, we try to minimize that as much as possible. Okay, moving to, to Europe, it's no secret that you're a, uh... Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, uh, this is not the question about Ukraine, because uh, I, I think, if I'm, uh, if I'm not wrong, that you decided not long ago, uh, maybe Israel is reportedly supplying Ukraine with a defense means for which it has been uh, begging for months, flak jackets and helmets. Could this creeping Israeli move to the side of Ukraine and the West damage our important uh, and sensitive security ties with Russia and maybe limit our freedom to act in the skies over Syria and Lebanon? Yeah. First of all, I'm very sorry about the war in Ukraine and I hope it will come to a soon end, as uh, soon as possible end. Uh, and we are uh, continuing uh, our activities in, our, in the northern arena uh, and as we do in all fronts uh, and we are maintaining our coordination with the Russians in this region. At the same time, I think uh, I can state clearly that Israel uh, stands with the West under the leadership of the United States in Europe. We express this in words and in our humanitarian support to Ukraine, including the delivery of protective gear, as you mentioned. Uh, to the emergency uh, organizations uh, and uh, we will keep it. Uh, of course, we are not involved uh, in the war itself, uh, a war that, as I said, I hope will come to its end as much as possible. Do you fear, I just remind, uh, uh, reminded myself this issue, do you fear a possibility of deterioration of this war to a, something a non-conventional, chemical or nuclear? There are talks here and there that it's possible. I, I hope it won't deteriorate uh, to those uh, directions. Uh, and uh, saying that, you know, it even increases the importance of not letting the Iranian become nuclear because if we want to intercept Iran's regional aggressiveness and global activity in terrorism, terrorism except, uh, aspects. Imagine how difficult it might be to deal with it while Iran is nuclear cap capable. So uh, therefore, uh, I hope that in Europe, uh, the nuclear aspect uh, will be, uh, not, won't become part of the campaign and we must make sure it uh, doesn't reach other regions in future times. Yes, it can, it can affect, maybe uh, people in the world will see the demonstration of such a, such a, such a danger. I think my final question is uh, more optimistic. Um, <laughs> Israel uh, is just, you, you cannot have an optimistic uh, chat with the, the defense minister of Israel, I think, <laughs> uh, in the last 74 years. But Israel <laughs> has just announced successful trials of a revolutionary aerial interception system using laser rays. Uh, when will this system be operational? And do you see it as a true game changer for Israel, along with the Iron Dome anti-missile system that will protect Israel against the missile threat by Hezbollah? And this is the first and last time we mention Hezbollah in this conversation. Yeah, uh, indeed, uh, this is uh, meaningful progress that we have done. 
but I should emphasize that we are in the beginning of the process. Uh, I trust that uh, the defense establishment and our industries uh, will uh, succeed in this very important uh, mission. I, I would not specify you know, a time or elaborate on operational plans, but uh, uh, we are moving forward. Uh, uh, it will be uh, a, a, a complement on our existing multi-layered air defense and it will uh, enable us a lot uh, to defend ourselves. Uh, and I think it will serve uh, many countries uh, that will be willing to use that kind of capability. It's, it's very important, but uh, I must emphasize, uh, Ben, that um, while it is very important to continue uh, to uh, strengthen our uh, defense capabilities, it is important uh, that uh, other than the defense means we should and we are uh, uh, continuing to strengthen our offensive capabilities because eventually uh, this is what uh, win wars. Uh, wars are not being win, won by, uh, you cannot win a war by defensive means, you can win a war by offensive means, and we must keep the balance of the Maybe in our next conversation, we'll talk about winning wars, especially after we, we are seeing that uh, the war in Europe is cannot be won, uh, but this is for the next time. Yeah, I want to thank you very much, uh, Defense Minister Benny Gantz, for joining us here in uh, on Israel and Monitor. Thank you again, and may we have a quiet Independence Day next week. Toda raba, Benny. Thank you. Toda raba. Thank you very much, and let's hope for quiet days. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take now a short break, and we'll be back. We we'll back right after that. Hello, I'm uh, Gilles Kepel, professor at uh, Sciences Po and uh, Normal Sup in Paris and author of a number of uh, books and articles on the Middle East. Through my new podcast, Reading the Middle East on the award-winning media service and monitor, we will take a deep dive into the trends in the region with the authors and thought leaders who are shaping how we think about the Middle East. Reading the Middle East will be a fantastic addition to Al Monitor's outstanding podcast lineup, including On the Middle East with Andrew Paraziliti and Amber Inzaman, and On Israel with Ben Kaspit. You can subscribe on your favorite listening platforms. We look forward to your joining our conversation. for staying with us. Let's try to uh, remember a few of the headlines we were just uh, given uh, by uh, uh, the Defense Minister uh, Benny Gantz. First, uh, we spoke about, of course, the Iranian uh, uh, threat, and uh, the Defense Minister said that the Israel should act as uh, not as the Iranian threat is an Israeli matter. He said that the Iranian nuclear program is first and foremost a global challenge for the whole world, then a regional challenge, of course, for a, a, a Israel and all the states in the, in, the, in the Middle East, especially the Gulf states and the, neighbors, the neighboring states of Iran. And only then it's an Israeli a challenge or problem and it said that the world is not uh, solving an Israeli, it's not, the world, world is not supposed to, to come and, and, and save Israel from the, uh, the Iranian nuclear threat. The world should uh, remember uh, North Korea, it's a global uh, interest to, uh, to, to take care or to, to make sure that Iran will not be nuclear. I asked him about the, the difference between his uh, uh, analysis and acts and, uh, and statements, and the other two guys in the Israeli uh, uh, triumvirate uh, in the, in the uh, leadership, I'm talking of course about uh, Prime Minister Bennett and uh, Foreign Minister Lapid, that they are uh, criticizing more harshly uh, the, the negotiation with, uh, with Iran and the, 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 the news that uh, maybe the, the, the United States agreed 
to take off the, uh, the revolu revolutionary guards, uh, Iranian revolutionary guards, uh, out of the, the terror list. Uh, so Benny Gantz said that, no, uh, it's not that, that we think different. He said that my style is different. And I, I asked him if he is the, the good cop or the bad cop, and they are the bad cops. And he said, I'm usually, all my life, the good cop. And he is right. I know this guy for many years now. And he's a good cop by, by nature. But of course, he, 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 uh, he said that uh, it's very important to uh, not to let uh, the revolutionary guards uh, that he declared as, a, as the, the biggest export of terror in the region uh, to take it out of the, from the list of uh, terror organizations. Another interesting headline that he said about the war in Ukraine that he hopes that uh, this war will not uh, push aside the Iranian problem or the Iranian threat because the world is too focused in what is going on, the terrible things that are going on in Mariupol and other places in the Ukraine. I asked uh, Benny Gantz a uh, delicate question about uh, the Israeli military option. I know that Israel is investing right now many billions of shekels in, uh, in the military option uh, that was frozen in the last Netanyahu years. And he said, we have, a bi we have ability and uh, he meant ability to strike uh, the nuclear infrastructure in Iran. We are making this uh, ability and these capabilities uh, stronger in order that we'll have the, the, the ability to... Israel should always be able to defend itself by itself. But of course, he, uh, he did not say, he said that he cannot really elaborate into details about this very so delicate uh, issue. I think the biggest uh, thing he said is that Iran advanced significantly in the last uh, year, uh, talking about nuc nuclear, and it is close now weeks from what we call professionally SQ-1. SQ-1 is uh, the, 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 when a state has enough quantity of uh, enriched uranium to military degree, in order to make one bomb. So actually, Iran is close to this point, weeks, weeks close, but the defense minister must emphasize that he doesn't say that Iran is nuclear or, or it's a threshold state, because there are many other things it has to, uh, to, be, to know how to do. What we call professionally weaponizing, to take, to, to build a bomb, not only enough material, you have to, to, be, to be able to build the bomb in, in the size of a basketball ball and to put it in a warhead of a, of a missile. And they need maybe, this is what I'm saying, not the defense minister, between two more years in order to do it. I asked him another delicate question about uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, what will happen if, uh, because the, the relationship between Israel and Russia are uh, in a, in a I think it's a deterioration after the uh, Israel declared many times in the last few weeks uh, a lot of criticism about the brutality of Russia, voted against Russia. Now it was published that the uh, defense minister, Begantz, is uh, approved the, uh, bringing the, the Ukrainians or uh, supplying the Ukrainians defensive material, not offensive, of course. And so Gantz said he's very sorry about the war. He hopes it will uh, end very soon. Israel has to be, in this case, with the West and the United States. But Israel, uh, the cooperation with the Russians vis-a-vis -vis the uh, northern frontier is going on. And Israel is uh, acting against uh, Iran uh, uh, right now as well. We're not going to halt it. Uh, last but not least, we, we spoke about the laser uh, uh, technology that Israel now is working on, uh, uh, talking about interception of rockets and uh, shells and missiles. And the uh, defense minister approved that there is a significant progress in the Israeli plan, in this plan. Uh, we are in the beginning of the process, he said, but it will happen and uh, it will be operational, and it's a huge Israeli success. 
that will help us uh, with this ability that we're talking about uh, to, to be able to protect ourselves. And many countries uh, have already said that they, are, they will very much want to acquire these abilities from Israel whenever it will be ready. I'm saying uh, Prime Minister Bennett was too optimistic when he declared a few weeks ago it will take one or two years. I think within three years we will see first operational laser interception uh, systems alongside with Iron Dome in Israel. I hope you found uh, this conversation interesting. And I hope to meet you here next week in the same place and time in Onizu and I'm all monitoring Ben Kaspit from Tel Aviv. Take care and bye bye.